Good morning, welcome everyone to my chess stream here, Weird Wednesday on Lee Chess and Twitch. International Master William Pascal. We are going to be playing unusual openings, which means things that I don't normally have inside my repertoire. I'm not going to play crazy, absurd openings, but uh, fun things, gambits, things like the King's Gambit, maybe interesting lines that I wouldn't normally play, basically. First moves like f4, b3. All right, let me um, <clears throat> let me get ready here. I have to log into Twitch again because it makes me do that when I try to refresh the page, which is really irritating. I can't even begin to express my irritation with the fact that you cannot refresh your page without logging in again in Twitch. I don't think that's normal. It's extremely strange. All right. Anyway, we are going to get started. It's um, any challenges between five plus three and seven plus three. We had a new challenger, Trumpowski, who asked if we could play chess 960, but I don't think we should do chess 960 on the day when I'm supposed to be playing unusual openings. I occasionally made some exceptions for, for our for our um, subscriber troll on a roll, but he's the only one, and I really shouldn't be doing that. So let's keep the focus on the topic, which is unusual openings here. Do you think some players like me attract complicated positions without realizing it? Arsenal fan, I don't think so, dude. I think that there are players on my stream, like Clash Kid, who seem to almost like play on purpose for, for unclear positions. It also has to do with like how much you seek or, or avoid exchanges, probably. So normally I take the subscribers first. Uh, we don't have any subscribers yet challenging, so I'm going to play this, this guy Trompowski. Wow, he's pretty strong. It's a new account. Um, okay, he has almost 100 games. I basically am asking people to have around 100 games. Playing B4. <clears throat> well, Trompowski, you don't have to play an unusual, unusual opening, but I appreciate that you're getting in the spirit of things. So B4. We'll take Arsenal fan next. He's basically playing the St. George reversed with this move order. I normally like to play setups with Bishop G4, but I guess here we might as well just play a straight up reverse St. George, which I've played on my stream quite a bit. This is a position I would normally be playing his side of the game. Some people like to take on c4. Maybe being a tempo down here on the normal lines, I should consider it. All right, let's try this. <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, d4 changes the, the character of the game. I wouldn't normally play that myself. I guess I have to play e4 here, killing his bishop on b2. Well, it obviously takes on the characteristics of French defense at this point. <clears throat> I was honestly, you know, mostly concerned about cd, cd, knight c3, and then knight f6, knight b5. He grabs my bishop pair. <clears throat> in that line and the position is probably chances for both sides um cd cd knight f6 cd cd knight c3 knight f6 knight b5 knight c6 knight takes d6 queen takes d6 with um approximately equal chances did i miss something oh no we're not not on the current position hey ancient gamer fellow insomniacs or people from europe who just wake or waking up. Um, there was a time when I also, for whatever reason, had lots of late night free time. So I used to play chess well into the morning sometimes. It's been it's been years since I, I made a habit of that though. 
All right, <clears throat> E4. I don't know if Trompowski, you know, normally plays this or he just is playing this opening because as I said, it's an unusual openings theme today. Now the thing that I mentioned a minute ago, is still relevant here. Hmm. I can give up the center or take. We can actually do a combination of the two. Maybe that's relevant. If pawn takes knight b5, though I don't know how bad that is actually for me. Shouldn't be so bad. Alright, <clears throat> it's a tough decision. I was thinking about knight takes. But this move I don't really like. Bishop b5 check. I'd like to trade my bad bishop. I thought, you know, normally they're going to go bishop b5 in that kind of situation. Alright, let's just hang out here with the tension. Keep the tension how it is. I'd like to trade white square bishops. I'd rather he did it on my terms. Um, maybe I take with my queen on d7. I could even give my knight a fallback maneuvering plan with like knight c6, knight e7 over to the king's side. If I take with the queen, I'm not really happy with my queen on e2 here. I don't need it to protect the e4 pawn. I don't know. It is out of the way on the back rank though. Knight takes what? Um, good morning, everyone. Unusual openings theme today, what I call Weird Wednesday. So no chess 960. We're playing just variations that I would normally not include in my usual blitz and classical chess repertoire. Just for fun. We do this every Wednesday. So it's 10 a.m. here in Budapest. The pawn on d5 is a weakness. Good call. That's the, that's the base of my pawn chain. But White has paid some prices for that. He has a very bad bishop on b2 and less space. <clears throat> um, well, there are lots of ways we could potentially play this position. I don't know what the best one is. <clears throat> Looking for tactics, I have like knight a4, knight takes b4. It's a nice shot. I think this kind of position is really about bishops versus knights. Obviously, I have a space advantage. But with the open file, um, I think that becomes the focus of attention here, the open file, the pawn. It's uh, it's like an advance French. Obviously, the pawn on d5 is important, which Arsenal fan alluded to earlier. I guess we play queen e6 now. There's some problems with that. Queen e6 is not obligatory. <clears throat> but it is interesting, huh? I don't know. Complicated situation now. This 
solid move, stopping queen g4. All right, this is one of the things I was talking about earlier. Achieving knight e7 so I could guard my d5 pawn. I think ultimately my hope is that I have a position with a better bishop against bad bishop on b2. My pawns are on the correct color. I don't really have a direct attack or anything like that, so my space advantage isn't that easy to use. Um, King d2 is a little nutty. But not easy to get him there in the short term. Not easy to exploit it in the short term. Um, okay, let's see. A6 weakens my structure. <clears throat> let's just... Aim for control of c4, maybe. Maybe I take with a knight on d7. Try to get my knight to c4. Use the c4 square as an outpost. a6 and b5 lets him in all right well we're getting a little bit low on time here now he's gonna castle that was weird Finally, now the question is, taking with the knight or taking with the queen? Queen takes. I want to be able to meet knight a4 with b6. Wade is obviously a very solid player. King maneuver d2, then rook d1. That's really pretty fantastic. That's a good move. b5. Do I have any realistic attacking chances on the king's side? I would think I could go for it here. <clears throat> Oh wow, what a resourceful move to come up with. Wow. Whose king is safer now? Interesting. I don't know, putting my rook on c4 seems pretty dumb. I think that white is okay here. I mean, I don't know about playing f3. Probably too risky to play f3. I don't know about my last move either. Okay, I didn't see this knight to g4, which I guess threatens knight f2, knight h2. So, interesting game. Unusual openings is a the theme today. Um, let's see if we got any here. Nobody actually played queen e7, I think. This may be asking a little too much of my position, honestly. Um, I think this honestly is normal with white to take time to play queen e7, but it might be a little too slow when I'm a tempo down here. 
Because honestly, after this, yeah, the computer is like you should take on C4. Transpose to a Carpob Miles type of situation. Carpob Miles is a famous game where, where Tony Miles like beat Carpov with Black in the St. George. But Karpov treated it like a Sicilian, so he took on, on C5 at one point, like this. Um, it's basically transposing to a type of Sicilian, which is not like really what I want to do. But to me, the, I don't like, I don't know, I don't like D4 that much. I think you should just play CD5, CD5, Knight C3, and um, after Knight F6, you've got Knight B5, Knight C6, Knight takes D6 check, Queen takes D6. White might even be better here. So, all right, next time I'm not going to play Queen E7. All right, guys, I'm going to take the challenges from my subscribers first. So, Arsenal fan and Soltigo. I shouldn't allow that. Good to know. When you're black in a reversed opening, you know you kind of have to like play a little more conservatively than you would in the in the normal situation. With that move less, it makes a big difference. All right, I'm playing a lot of D4 the last couple. The last day or so, I decided um, I think I should be trying to play more D4 instead of just Knight F3. But, I mean, our aim here is to play unusual openings. So, anyways, it doesn't matter. Let's play the, uh, the what's it called? Black Mar D... Black Mar... It's Black Mar Deemer, right? Hmm. I don't really have much experience in the Black Mardimer, but there's only one way to learn. All right, Soltigo, we'll do. Soltigo is our is our moderator. He's working to improve the stream here with me, and I want to thank him for that. So there are games with Queen takes F3. This was actually played by the German master Deemer. Um, who the opening is named after, but I, I think that objectively, knight takes f3 is is correct. Exchange Slav. There are some interesting developments in this exchange Slav. d4, d5, c4, c6, cd, cd, bishop g5, okay? Playing it in Trompowski style, that's been played really some interesting games on a fairly high level recently. I think that's a dangerous line if black is not well sort of well prepared. So Arsenal fan E6 actually, I personally, I personally recommend very strongly G6 for black, but E6 is is okay. E6 is I think quieter. Um, maybe not quieter than G6. I don't know. Somehow more conservative. But it's solid. The statistics aren't so good for e6, I can tell you. Um, e6 is recommended by Graham Burgess in, uh, in the Queen's Gambit for the attacking player. He covers some rare openings. But actually, I don't think he consulted, <laughs> he consulted any statistics when he recommended that line. Because in reality, um, I don't know, here actually, Castle and Queen's side... should be an idea. Arsenal fan. I thought we had a game like something like this once before. Actually, e6 scores a lot worse than, than a couple of the other lines. Both g6 and bishop g4. Black is concerned about me playing d5, most likely, which is understandable. I'm just trying to decide whether I want to castle kingside or queenside here. I guess we'll keep our options open. Yeah, 
Yeah, he has to be careful not to castle, because then I have bishop takes f6. Not to castle in that position after bg5. This is a classic French defense trick, where they castle bishop takes f6 and queen e4. <clears throat> so... We're down a pawn, but we have good compensation. I think that if you looked at this with a with a chess engine, probably white has enough for the pawn. Strategically speaking, um, in terms of active pieces and, and attacking threats, I probably have just about enough compensation for the sacrificed pawn. So anyway, now we have to try to get something going. Rook AE1. Or a more traditional plan like attacking the black king side. Something like h4. One thing I'm, I'm concerned about is securing my bishop on g5 in the eventuality that he tries to, if he tries to trade pieces um, with knight d5 or something like that. Of course, we could also play h5 at some point. I'm not really sure where the h1 rook belongs. I mean, it, it could be useful backing this h-pawn up. It could come to the center, even the f-file. So I wasn't really in a hurry to determine. I guess <clears throat> you'd really like to play like rook g1 and g4, g5 as well. Bulletproof. Um, G6 is better than bishop G4. You guys can take my word as as um, gospel. The best line is G6. Sometimes you play bishop G4 after that, but I did some pretty good research into the uh, into the the black mardimer for black. This is definitely the best move for black G6. Bishop G4 is okay. It's not quite as good, um, and E6 is a little bit passive. Now, what do we do? Um, want to attack, but how? Move my rook, and uh, it seems strange to move the rook somehow. As I said, Rook h3 is interesting. Arsenal fan is fast. Yeah, against bishop g4, the problem is that you have to trade your bishop off on f3, and white always gets a lot of compensation um, on the white squares. Bishop g4 is probably better than e6 too, but... Um, but I still like g6 the best. I think black has got a comfortable game after g6. Anyways, on to another subject. The black mardimer. <laughs> I never thought I would seriously analyze this opening. Now a3, perhaps. It's not absolutely necessary to play a3, but if I don't play a3, he can play a3 and kind of weaken my, my dark squares a little bit. Not too much time, really, to play a quality game, but 7 plus 3 is the best I can do. 
Rook e8. This gives us some interesting possibilities of bishop to b5 now. Kind of playing like positionally. Changing, changing tack. Is this even good? Looks like we win the exchange. Maybe not. Feels like we should win at least an exchange here. Our pieces are very, very active. Everybody's in the game. So he does lose an exchange. d5 maybe that opens his queen up though i'm not sure what the best approach is here honestly maybe rook f1 wasn't even a good move he has like three different defenses to that all right <clears throat> i was expecting knight d6 actually from arsenal fan I think knight d6 is better. Because the knight is centralized on d6 and not so easy for me to... Well, I guess I could try to trade him off, but how? You know, can't play knight e4. Knight b5 gets pinned, like bishop a6. Not so easy to get rid of the knight on d6, defending f7. He could also simply have played f6, which I think should be considered here. Pawn takes. I cannot do. I've got to watch out for bishop a6. All right. Oddly enough, I'm not sure I had a really good move there. He missed bishop g2. But in any case, like, if I took the other way, I have to lose the exchange anyways. Um, it's really sad. It's really sad, so that's... That's bad. Um, all right, let's get our rooks to a sensible place here. Still, that bishop is a force to be reckoned with. Queen f4 is interesting. Am I actually benefiting from that, though? I don't know. Not so easy. He's just down an exchange. I've got to be accurate here. He's actually got a... He's got a pawn for the exchange, so it's not that much material. Um, dangerous. But we should be winning. His pawns are a little bit weak as well. But I allowed... What happened? Bishop f6. Didn't realize there was even a threat. When I played g4, underestimated the bishop f6. All right. Now what? The file. The file. Trying to sound like the guy from Fantasy Island, but it didn't work. Um. All right, man, I don't know. This is still not so easy. In exchange for a pawn, isn't that much material. 
we got a lot of work to do. Unfortunately for Black, I think the fact that his pawn is like wedged down here on a4 is just a liability. You know, like there, he had to play this passive move, basically. I have time to play g5 now, everything's protected. This pawn's protected the base of my pawn chain. We've got pressure down the f file. Earlier, actually, Arsenal fan, I thought you should have played rook a5 much, much earlier in the game. You had the idea of rook a5. I'm not sure if I have a concrete plan here and even, um, but I'm just hoping to loosen up his, loosen up his position or trade, trade down one or the other. We're focusing on dark squares. All right. Bishop on c6 is a pretty good piece. Um, maybe I need to break his king side with h5. Also h6, the idea of weakening the dark squares. I'd rather not let my cl my clock get too low here. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Dark squares are pretty weak. Good defense by Black thus far. This might actually be quite difficult for me. That move, I'm not sure about. You dropped a piece. All right. Arsenal fan, tough as always, man. Let's see. What's up the opening here? That's strange. Okay, nobody played b6 almost. Nobody plays my move bishop d3. But I think it's not bad. Second best move according to the engine. Um, everyone plays bishop g5 for some reason. I don't think it's necessary to play that right away, but... So this is a really rare position. You're supposed to play c5. Yeah, that's probably why you're supposed to play bishop g5. I don't know. To prevent c5 or discourage c5. Okay. So Rich, you need to try to break with c5. Um, 7 plus 1, I'm not doing Zarastutra. We, we have to have at least a 3 second increment. So Zara Sutra, it's Zara Sutra, if you'd like to re-challenge me, um, then uh, please do so. I will, I will remember you're like in first place here in in terms of challengers. But I am um, taking my subscribers first, ahead of the guests. 
So Arsenal fan, remember to play c5 if possible. I think that's the key idea. That's why I guess I'm supposed to play bishop g5. Although, I don't think bishop g5 prevents... Uh, I don't think it prevents c5. In fact... Actually, it's a good question. Um, yeah, bishop e7 is the recommended move here. Is c5 so bad? Then the idea would be d5. Okay. So bishop g5 prevents c5 in a way. Anyway, that's all I know. Um, all right, so turbo horse. Uh, I'm not playing um, players without established games. Soltigo, M. Havgar. I'd like you guys to have like 100 established games on the on the site before I, I accept challenges. Soltigo, Havgar, and uh, Troll on a Roll. You guys are all subscribers to the stream. Yeah, I do, I do appreciate if everyone has 100 games, some kind of established account that you didn't create today, basically. Soltigo, are you with us? Troll to roll, are you challenging me to chess 960? Oh man, come on, dude. Let's play normal chess with unusual openings today. Soltigo, what am I going to play? Let's play Ali Aliyakin. I mean, I actually play the Aliyakin sometimes in a very rare, you know, blitz games and tournament games, but it's not really something I know that deeply. So it still counts as an unusual opening. Now we're going to go off on a tangent, okay? And play a move that one of my students played. Um, normally I play d5 here. But one of my students played e6 recently, which is a move that I had never sort of thought about before. It's actually not that bad for black. But Soltigo doesn't even hesitate. All right. I'm just playing it like um, Nimzovich Sicilian. It's not normal, thus I don't play normal chess. All right. Fair enough, Troll, you are a subscriber, so I'll, I'll give in to your desire to play Chess 960, but I did I did decline the Chess 960 from one of our one of our guests. You're gonna make him feel discriminated against. Um, D4, and now, if I play C5, it becomes interesting. I guess D6 is okay. I'm very curious when we go, you know, there's not too many games in this line, but could this transpose to a normal Nimzovich Sicilian? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't know. You could transpose to an IQP position, which looks slightly better for white. I'm not really thrilled with this, but it's okay. I guess it's defensible. It's just the kind of unpleasant position after ED, bishop takes, DC, bishop takes. I don't know whether I'm supposed to put the knight or the bishop on in the way here. I guess both are playable. You know, normally I like wouldn't mind exchanging pieces like white square bishops, but because this could be like an IQP situation, I don't think I really want to trade trade necessarily. So we'll go with the knight. Um, okay, queen e2 is a weird move. Not completely weird because he has the e file. It's um, not blocking any pieces really. CD, pawn takes pawn, check, bishop e6, actually, looks okay for black. So, at least I don't end up with an Isolani in the center. I could have 
also maybe done something like d takes e and queen e7, or even bishop e7. I mean, actually, that's maybe the better move. I'm not sure. But I am going to end up with an Isolani anyway, just to make me eat my words. So, whatever. Or maybe not. Weird situation. Do we take... Well, we play bishop e6 if he plays queen takes e5 check, which is fine. Pawn takes looks more... Actually, black's fine here. I've got bishop e4 check, so... It's at least equal. At least equal for black. I mean, the problem, I think... Let's see, bishop e4 check, bishop d2... I mean, I have interesting moves like queen a5 there, even. I think we should develop as quickly as possible. Um, I can simply take on d2 and castle. But I want to try to be incisive here. Um, queen a5, for example... Bishop takes c6. I like queen a5. Maybe he does something like rook d1 there. I mean, at the end of the day, does queen a5 just sort of force him to play rook d1, which is a good move? The other day when there were a lot of ambulances and and uh, airplanes. Um, it turns out that the Chinese Prime Minister was here in Budapest. That's why there was so much noise. They had like all kinds of streets cordoned off and stuff for the Chinese delegation. But I'm hearing like loud noises. I don't know if they're still here or not. Bishop d2, Queen d2, castles. All right. I don't know. Gladys Troll is hammered. That's awesome. Morning drinking is the best. The problem is, is like the the man that that like you know you get into places you would never you would you just wake up, you know tonight somewhere you don't know where you are. Um, if you start now, uh, all kinds of weird stuff happens. You know, it's not like you're you're starting in the evening and and just going to bed. You know, you go on an adventure <laughs> when you start drinking in the morning. Um, anyways, Queen A five. Not exactly a fundamental move, but somehow I I want to kind of increase the increase the tension in the position. Now I might have Bishop G four actually. Bishop g4, castles, bishop takes f3. That's kind of annoying. Well, it's not a bad move. I mean, bishop g4 is certainly okay. But we can also play bishop takes d2 check, obviously. That's probably not bad for him. His knight could rebound back to d2 and into like b3 and d d4. That might actually not be bad for him. So I guess we go ahead and do this. I think if I had the worst pawn structure, which is the case here, um, I probably don't mind looking for some kind of heavy piece ending rather than a minor piece ending. I don't want to end up in like bad bishop versus knight, you know, and the bad pawn structure where his knight like locks into those juicy weaknesses here, blockading my center. You don't want to have like bad bishop versus knight in that kind of structure. If I get a heavy piece ending, my, my pawn structure weakness is probably not as significant as it would be in a minor piece ending. Um, so,
but this is kind of weird now we, we could get and I think that this actually allows Bishop takes f3 kind of a lazy move by Soltigo not kind of like a very lazy move h3 um, extremely lazy move at the end of the day though um, what am I doing here Time is a waste in. B3 might even be a useful move for him. Why am I making him do that? All right, I was just about to lose on time. But maybe I don't trade queens, damn it. Reminds me of Bill Cosby. Um, Nobody, like, young people don't know, like, Bill Cosby's, like, solo stand-up comedy before he was a TV star. Um, he had this one skit where <laughs> he's, like, making jokes about people and how his grandfather called him Damn It because he couldn't remember his name because he had so many brothers and sisters or something. Um... Anyways, <clears throat> queen a6 here. I'm not going to trade queens. I changed my mind. How about that? How do you feel about that? I was going to trade queens. You're a nice guy, but then I changed my mind. This is not a one-way street. Uh, I think he has play, though. There's an airplane. I think the Chinese premier must still be here. The weird airlines, airlines, weird airplanes flying around. We've got to be super careful about getting mated, but let's just remind Soltigo that his king is in the center of the board. Oh no. Let's not and say we did. Yeah, that I missed. I definitely missed this. I didn't miss it completely though, because I saw it the next move. Okay. Well, he has a draw if he wants, or he can try to mate me. I don't think he can mate me, though. He's going to fall victim to a, like a large series of checks, so he has to take a draw here. Castle's queenside, queen a3 check. Actually... Yeah. Fortunately, he can't put his king on d1 if he castles queenside. I can actually sack my queen. No. It almost mates me. Oh, but I can play rook somewhere. Rook g1, check king f8. He doesn't have a mate there. Ah, there's that perpetual, though. I don't know if I had a better move, though, honestly. So I shouldn't have avoided the trade of queens. Castle's queenside, rook somewhere. Rook g1 check. King f8. Um, he doesn't have a mate, and I have perpetual checks, like, all over the place. Also, rook sacks on b3 sometimes. So I don't think he's winning. King d2 might weirdly win here. Uh, I don't think so, Rick. Richard, I have queen a5 check, and um, what's he going to do? After queen a5 check? No. There's queen a5 check. It's just a draw. Oddly enough, I shouldn't um, allow this, though. Damn. Just g6, I'm an idiot. I should play g6 first, and then I'm better. I didn't see rook takes g7 until the moment after I made the move, of course. Queen a6 was good, but I forgot about rook. I didn't see rook takes g7, of course, till I released the piece. And then I was, like, trying to hold my breath, <laughs> waiting for him to, to not play it.
Nice job, Soltigo, spotting the, the rook sack there. All right. Um, we've got Havgar and Troll in a roll. Good game, man. It's a good thing you didn't miss rook to hg7, because then you would you would be seriously slightly worse. Havgar always gets white against me, but let's play another one of these um, f3 Nimzos, because I'm, I'm really into this variation now. Oh, we're not supposed to... No, we're playing Weird Wednesday. Okay, I forgot. So Havgar played g4. I don't remember if you ever did this against me, Havgar. Um... But I know that I have played this before. I think last time I faced this, I mentioned the possibility of not taking the pawn. Which is interesting. Somebody played this against me. It might have been you. Um, I wouldn't really rate it as quite sound, but heck, I mean, it's probably as good as the Black Bar Deemer, I guess. So I guess the Chinese Premier is still here. There's like weird airplanes flying around. But that would be a long time for them to be here. I mean, they arrived on like Monday. Actually, today is Wednesday, right? Not airplane, but a helicopter. Extremely low flying helicopter right above my head. Um, well, that was a helicopter, right? Not a lot of ghetto birds here in Budapest, really. Um, it's not like L.A. or something. You don't typically hear police helicopters, you know. They don't have a lot of financial resources for that. They, they just bust them out for, for like, special occasions. Um, okay, knight c3 now. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. What's fundamentally logical? G6. G6. I mean, E5 would make sense, wouldn't it? Then we're like going to transpose some kind of Shirov Philidor. That could happen, couldn't it? Like, you could transpose to the G4 Philidor. That wasn't a helicopter, Gladys Troll? A huge bumblebee. Um, security for the Chinese Prime Minister, I guess. I don't know. It's They've been here. I don't believe they would stay in Hungary for three days. I'm sorry. It must be something else. Just not that important. Um, they're trying to do some kind of financial deal with the Hungarian government. No other country would, like, agree to it except for Hungary, of course. All right. I don't know. C6. This looks like a useful move. We're not committing ourselves. Maybe we can play D5 in one moment. It's kind of like a peer. It's, it's a little like a check defense. It looks, like, reasonable. We can still play E5, maybe. But it's starting to get irritating, this uh, the huge bumblebee. Circling back again for a second round. Well, I'm going to go for this now. That is literally like... That has got to be like 20 meters above my apartment. That is the lowest any aeronautical instrument has come to my head since I've been living here. Um, that's got to be extremely close to the ground. I'm on the f like fifth floor of a of an old apartment building, um, so 20 meters above that, Bishop G5, kind of a weird move, he's provoking weaknesses basically, looks like, actually not bad, 
I don't really feel inclined to play, you know, I don't feel inclined to attack his bishop on g5. I think I'd rather just develop my pieces somehow. So why not bishop g7? There is a Chinatown in Boston. It's not a big one though. It's um it's quite small compared to like, you know, obviously California cities or or New York. They used to call it um the combat zone. But now it's been the area has been pretty well cleaned up in Boston. It was it was like 20 years ago, one of the worst areas of, of Boston, but not the Chinatown, but around Chinatown is kind of, was, was traditionally pretty sketchy. Not really Chinatown itself, but now it's, it's significantly improved from, from the eighties and not early, early nineties. Queen D2. Coming back for a third, third attempt is the helicopter. Queen D2, um, I think somebody's just having fun up there since I don't think the Hungarian police get too many assignments for their helicopter crew. They're just kind of like really excited to get a chance to crack it out for something. I want to like fire up the, the ice cube just uh, in, in honor of the The surveillance helicopter. Knight a6 is interesting. Might want to develop a piece. I'm not overly concerned about bishop takes a6 since I'm a pawn up. But, you know, in retrospect, Well, I mean, what's he going to do? Like h3? Maybe I should consider playing h6. Ever so slightly weakening my king side. Not really necessary, is it? There's an Alexei Yermolinsky combination. Alex fell for this against me. Like queen a5, bishop takes e7. King takes e7, knight d5 check. Um, and he didn't. He basically blundered bishop takes e7 against me which led to a catastrophic loss. Um, that's a pretty weird tactic, though. It's not exactly something like you see every day. But maybe I should end this standoff on the king's side before something weird happens. I will slightly weaken my king's side doing this, but I, I really don't want to see a bishop takes e7 type of thing. We'll see what he does here. Yeah, queen a5, and the look on Yermolinsky's face when I played like bishop takes e7 was priceless. <laughs> you would, you would like, I don't know, you would, you'd really like, you know, to take a picture at that moment. The sick, the sick look on his face was just like, and then he couldn't move his king, he couldn't take it. It was like he wanted to resign right away, but he, he was only down a pawn. Um. The San Francisco Chinatown, yeah. That's probably been in existence from the 1800s, right? Okay, so e5 is not on here. But I thought you should play bishop h4, probably. Now I can actually do this. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> My queen is floating on a5, but there's no bishop takes e7. This is a pretty scary type of gambit. I mean, you're going to catch a lot of people out with this, no doubt. The pawn doesn't mean that much. I mean, if a player like wasn't comfortable playing the Pierce defense for black, then then accepting this gambit 
I mean, I guess they would go for like a more of like a Philidor type of approach for black. I mean, maybe that objectively is the best, you know, just like knight takes g4, um, e4. Playing e5 straight away, probably better for a player who doesn't feel comfortable in, in like hyper modern type of positions. Now, my knight doesn't have a lot of squares, obviously. You ever, like, say something and wish you could take it back? Yeah. All right. Um... Well, <clears throat> we don't have too much time. Let's go, boys. Let's get something going, I don't know. I'm getting a little desperate here. But we've got a pawn to the good, so... It's always good to have an extra material to be able to give it back to break the other guy's attack. I like how Troll said California will be Russia again. Was it all like one continent before? Are you sure about that? I guess Alaska was connected, right? But I don't know about California. Um, I don't think California was like connected to the Pacific Rim, was it? The Pacific Ocean is pretty big. Um, maybe. Was it all one landmass on that side too? I mean, I know that they're like, you know, on the Atlantic side. South America and Africa were probably connected, but I'm not sure about California and California and Russia. How do you connect that? All right. <clears throat> B4. Let's play Knight of Six first. Let's not and say we did. We have an interesting we have interesting move here. Interesting move. Knight takes F2. We have interesting move. I didn't see it forever. Um, basically I looked at the position for like 45 seconds before realizing he couldn't play knight e2. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, that worked out. So I guess Havgar could have played a3 instead to stop me from playing b4. When you do a3 in those type of situations, Havgar, um, oftentimes like b4 is not a threat because of things like knight a2. Now he's going berserk, but I think we want to keep it, keep it closed. Maybe now? Hmm. Yeah, Gurganidza style. No unnecessary opening of the position, please. So you can do a3 because b4, knight a2, something like that, isn't so bad. In other words. Now what? Well, now it's like a materially winning position. I don't want to fall victim to those tactics again with, with pinning my queen on a5. We're just up a pawn and the exchange. And our king isn't committed to castling, so we can, we can just kind of go by, go with the flow here. Hmm. All right. He's really speculating. Who can blame him at this point? Is he going to have some real threats here?
Not yet. But soon. Alright, man. Interesting. We have any games in this position here? D6 is the main move, but interestingly, black scores better with D5. Nevid Nietzsche. Nevid Nietzsche. Actually, he's a very strong positional player. I was talking to Brian Smith, who described Nevid Nietzsche as like a tricky tactical player. It's funny how like people can misunderstand different players, but Nevin Nietzsche is like a technician, man. He's he's massive. Um, but funnily enough, d5 is actually scoring better than d6. You've got to be willing to play like bishop e2. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's a problem, dude. Knight f6. Simon Williams, Nevin Nietzsche, h5. Huh. Apparently, knight f6 is better. I would be scared of e5 here. Not scared, but you know, you'd think that would be White's best try. Not opening the position necessarily. Um, I would play that with White, but you know, you're like a pawn up in a French or something. I mean, I don't know. The Nevid Nietzsche, too tough for Simon Williams. Too tough for me too. All right, Troll in a Roll is challenging to seven plus five. 1666 666 um i'm only playing this 960 because troll is a subscriber normally we're not playing any chess 960 today i'm making one exception all right here comes the b3 trying to get my bishops in the game from the distance it's snowing here by the way gladys troll or it was snowing when i started the stream I haven't um, I haven't checked in the last hour obviously doesn't snow much in Budapest it's not like Russia oddly enough Boston is a place where we got some snow the year before I left Boston remember it was like 2003 there was like the cars were covered in snow in Budapest we get like no snow um, but it was weird to see snowflakes in November just now. Yeah, Marius, I didn't plan on night F2, you know, I actually didn't even see it stupidly enough, um, until like the moment, you know, you made the move or the moment before you, before you made the move, like one moment before you, you know, you had the move. I was like, yeah, oh, I have night takes F2. I was just playing it because I didn't like the other, I didn't like my other options, um, Interesting gambit, though. It's not that easy to handle for white. Symmetry. The symmetrical chess 960 position 432, of course. I've put a lot of study into this. Where is Arsenal fan Richie? Gladys Troll, the important thing is that you don't get drunk and fall in the snow. Alexander Ivanov did that in Archangelsk a couple of years back. You know, it was actually more like 10 years ago. And uh, he froze his feet. Not a good thing to do. Um, he, like, frost bit his feet very seriously and then, like, played an Aeroflot anyway after severely frostbiting his feet, which I thought was kind of insane. But this was a guy who like got hit by a tractor trailer and acted like, you know, it was no big deal and just played his tournament game after that too. Twice he's come within millimeters of death and just acts like it's normal to just go and play his tournament game immediately after. E3.
Maine. We got a lot of northern people here. Me not. Actually, Budapest, oddly enough, is further north than, than Boston, but it doesn't feel like it at all. Um, I guess, like, lateral latitude-wise, Budapest and Maine are probably about the same. But obviously you have the ocean there, so that's why it gets so cold. I don't know. Yeah, there was this, no, there was this thing where Alexander always, like, tries to save money by, like, not staying at the hotel where the tournament is, and, and he, it was some big, like, U.S. Open in Philadelphia, and uh, he was commuting, like, 20 minutes to some, you know, really cheap budget hotel, and once I was, like, standing in the parking lot, like, I don't know, waiting for the round to start, and uh, I see him, like, walking up the, the hill from the parking lot, like, blood running down his arm, and he was like, yeah, my car just got totaled. Yeah, tractor trailer. I was analyzing the position in my head when, when suddenly tractor trailer crushed my car. <laughs> and he acted like it was totally normal. Like his car is totaled. He like should be in the hospital. And he acted like it was totally, I was like, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm going to play. Uh, the round is starting in 10 minutes. I was just like, whoa, dude, that is insane. Um, totally crazy d5 the guy's like lucky to be alive and he's just going to continue with his next round like it's totally normal i like the way the troll is playing this he's playing for the center rather than routinely you know symmetrically answering here i think i need to play d4 not to let him overrun me I think we can guard our C pawn with like bishop d3 probably if necessary. But I don't want to let him play d4 because that's his threat here. Dude, if you've ever seen the guy like, he like plays blindfolded during his tournament games and his concentration is so deep that he, he can just tune everything out, you know. He was literally like analyzing his last game in his head and uh... I don't know what happened. Maybe he missed the stop sign or something. I don't know whose fault it was, but but you could see it could happen very easily to someone who can just kind of like concentrate and, and tune everything out. It's easy to just like not not see something coming, not hear it. it was basically in this <laughs> he was in Zen mode when the tractor trailer came for him but fortunate to be alive um once i got my car stolen during a round i realized my car was stolen right before the round started and uh that was different though you know it's not like you're physically in any danger um i decided to go ahead and play my game but i was like really distracted that's about the most upsetting thing that's ever happened to me right before a game started. Um, there was nothing I could do about it at the, at the time, though, so I just decided to go ahead and play the next round. I went out to the parking lot. My car wasn't there anymore. You know, Philadelphia. The car thievery center of the world. Carjacking center. Carjacking. Sergey Kardyakin. Kardyakin. I want to play rook on f to d1, but then he's going to have bishop f4 at some point, which is going to trap like my rook on c1. It's very annoying. Maybe I should take on c5 here. Can I keep his center under control if I opt for d takes c? Rook fd1, pawn takes pawn, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, that doesn't look, nothing appeals here. It's symmetrical. Symmetrical and I have the first move and I don't know what to do. 
it's a very typical situation. I think I should take on d5. Perhaps then play like rook f d1. This kills his bishop on on a8, I guess, to some degree. But I am I feel like I'm strengthening his control of the center a little bit. But it's not like I'm helping his bishop like improve on c8 or something like that. Um, now I had a car stolen in, in Boston as well, so it's not just Philadelphia. I guess all American cities are good like that. C takes d5, e takes d5, um, what are we going to do? Rook f d1 was the plan. But I'm not that in love with this. You know, sometimes it's harder to actually have the extra move and have to come up with a plan. All right, let's go with this hanging pawn approach here. At least I know where my pieces belong. But I'm a little bit concerned that he has some, some strong, obviously has some strong potential play against my king's side. I have the same, though. Actually, he can do... No, he can't do d4. Um, not that easy. So, but Black Widow's pawns taking toward the center, I think, has the more dynamic um, and obviously ability to, to lunge forward with the hanging pawns. Gives him a little more dynamism than white. I'm playing for static advantage, and he's playing for more, like, dynamic... Arsenal fan talking about knight g5. Yes, didn't occur to me. Well, maybe. It's a little like a cheat bow. Not sure I'm actually threatening anything there. Oh no, I guess I am. I mean, if I play knight g5, the thing is he does h6, then what do I do, you know? It doesn't seem like I have a forward threat. You know, maybe now. This is a strange passive move by Black. He wants to bring him back to the center, though. I mean, e6 is not bad. Not a bad place to go. It can support c5. But there's, like, tension in the position, and he's, he's maneuvering with tension in the position. Seems weird in a way. e4. e4 simply drops a pawn. Now we've got like knight h4 type of stuff. No, I don't know. Knight d8 is a kind of cool move. I have bishop f5, but it doesn't really do anything. Actually, bishop f5, huh? Knight e6. I'd like to play e4 somehow. Some other cool maneuver. running out of time here quickly queen maneuver it's kind of a queen's indian type of structure um an e3 queen's indian this is actually a, a kind of classic square for the queen and um in some e3 lines of the the queen's indian i can bounce over there and bounce into h3 the same way that he had like bishop f4 on me in some lines where he's going d4 the f5 square can be a weak point and if he plays g6 then his whole like long diagonal goes gets really really bad so he can sack a pawn with d4 i don't see anything there this is an interesting move he's deciding to Simply deal with it like that. So now we maneuver. We try to protect our king side and look to the dark squares. The dark side. All 
I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared of d4. d4 followed by d4 followed by bishop takes f3 and knight g5 with some annoying threats against my king. What am I going to do about that? Knight e5 or something? Man, now I regret moving my queen. And he also has other ideas. Hmm. But wait. Take, take, take. All right, well, what am I going to do? I've got to do something. I'm about to lose on time. He's going to do d4. Maybe I just move my knight or something, like a defensive move. Knight e1. Can I actually do knight e1? We're going to find out. I don't want to see bishop takes f3. Not today. Not today, troll. Man, my king side is, is really dodgy. I think I'm in a bad way here. I mean, didn't he have bishop takes h2 check and knight g4? Bishop takes h2 check, king takes h2. Maybe I have king g3. Maybe I have king g3 there. I'm not sure. But even that looks dodgy. Like queen, queen g5, f4, queen h5 or something. I think he might have had bishop takes h2. We'll check after the game because it looks really scary for me. Even this is scary. I mean, black is... Maybe simply knight g4 instead of anything fancy last move. You know, instead of bishop e5. Knight e1 can't be right. That can't be right. Knight g4, I have h3. It feels like he's got to have some kind of sacrificial thing going on there. It's practically impossible that he doesn't. I mean, it just feels like black has something. But bishop takes h2 is by far the scariest. King takes, knight g4 check, king g3, queen g5, f4, queen h5, threatening mates with queen h2 check and f5. Well, apparently he's just winning here. Damn, dude. Knight g4 now. Man, that's hardcore. Just hardcore. Mother of Mamad Yarov. This pawn is just devastating. I mean, nice game, troll. You're you're actually just winning in this final position. Who needs pieces? It was too much. You know, I was asking too much here, playing like knight e1. I have to take and allow this. Um, but I didn't like it. It looks really gross. This is better for black as well. Knight g3 just take back you know you're just like positionally hosing me so the whole plan of playing queen b2 is bad i guess it's all too slow oddly enough i have queen c3 which is better because it protects it protects f3 duh okay didn't even occur to me after this move you have to play king g7 damn all right or d4 Interesting. So, troll, did you have bishop takes h2 check right away? Well, apparently knight g4 is always the best. I was curious if this actually works. Knight g4 check. I thought king g3. That's queen g5. f4, queen h5. I don't have rook h1, and I'm getting mated to queen h2 check followed by h5 so 
I would have to go to g1. And then miraculously, after queen h4, knight g3, queen h2 check. <laughs> Apparently I'm not dead here, believe it or not. That's insane. There's like four pieces right around my king. Look at that. I'm not getting mated here. How is that even possible? How is that even possible, dude? How is white possibly not getting mated? If we run the computer here long enough, I'm sure that black has to have something. Um, what? Knight g5 and knight takes d5? Going back, uh, Arsenal fans suggested... Knight g5. Was it last move? here there's actually a game in the Lee chess database that reached this exact position dude that's insane huh agent against all right oh knight takes d5 whoa oh I have knight takes d5 An improvement on Arsenal's basic idea. I mean, he was talking about knight g5, but he has h6 there. So, the same theme, but first we play like knight takes d5, and basically I win a pawn. Although I have to walk into a very precarious diagonal, um, he doesn't have a good way to stop it. He has to play g6, which like weakens the long diagonal. And now there's some scary tactics, though. Like, I would have been scared to go into this, honestly. I have to sack my queen here. Oh, I'm not sacking my queen. I am sacking my queen. Bishop takes h2. King takes h2. Rook takes a8. He can also play... Yeah, he has to play... Queen d6 check. King h1. Rook takes a8. What is this I have? What do I have here? e takes d... Three pieces for a queen, so this is really good for white. Um, that's my best, but obviously, you know, hard to catch that. All right, we're going to play Mule Skinner and Ayesta, and then let's see, String Dog and uh, Parametric. Once we play these subscribers, um, the problem is you're not calculating. Yeah, exactly. You need the Kotov troll the classic soviet grandmaster kutov kutov is russian right he's not bulgarian yeah he was definitely soviet gm kutov is uh regarded as a famous book but a lot of people find the book kind of hard to digest think like a grandmaster um but that's what we would recommend for you, troll. Exactly what you're talking about, you know, basically creating trees of analysis in your mind. I accepted String Dog's challenge. I meant to play Mule Skinner, but here we are. So let's just play it, and then we'll play the subscribers next. Rather than make this player, you know, have to re-challenge me. Sorry, you guys, but I'm going to have to wait for the subscriber games next. I have to play something unusual here. I played c5, but now we're gonna we're gonna vary from the usual with queen a5. This this is a rarely seen line. I saw Chandler Biro. Actually, Chandler Biro plays the white side of of the c3 Sicilian. I don't know why I associate this with Chandler Biro. Biro Chandler, Romanian Hungarian. I am. The Brezhnev like eyebrows. Yeah, Gladys Troll. It's a good book though. Definitely in the library. Think like a grandmaster. Wouldn't hurt you. You can probably you can probably I mean god they, they it has to be published in Russian, right? I would hope. Um Alright, Knight F three I think I'm supposed to play e6, basically, in all cases, when I do queen a5. 
it's a kind of positionally dubious setup for black, but it stops d4 temporarily. It's just kind of... The basic idea is to confuse white <laughs> in his opening opening knowledge. But, I mean, if you just make logical moves for white, you should get a slight advantage. Think like a punk. Mule Skinner. Well, the Think Like a Grandmaster has definitely been highly higher regarded than the Play Like a Grandmaster. I, mean, I think it was an afterthought, the other book. It's like a bad sequel to a great movie. But not bad. I mean, just not as good as the original. Um, one of my students recently had a game with White with Knight A3. I think that's probably like the main line. I guess we can play D5 at some point. But I am a little concerned about my development. But I think we have to aim for a structure based on d5 because otherwise I don't really get what I'm doing, you know? If I play d5 right away, take, take, castles, maybe bishop d6. I don't know, this looks a little dubious, but we'll give it a shot. I'm opening the position very early here. I know this is the structure I'm supposed to aim for. Probably playing it too early though. Not like Queen A5 is like a really respectable variation or something. But in the games that are played, as far as I know, you definitely aim for a D5 type of structure. I'm basically playing a Tarash French with my queen on a5 for no reason. Which is going to ensure that I lose a tempo at some point. And now we immediately have a problem. I probably have to take. And. Knight f6. Normally isn't played in this type of structure. The problem is that bishop d6 walks into knight to b5, and that could be very bad. And knight b5 is a problem anyways. Um, but I need to get my king to a safe position quickly here. Knight c6. Challenging the strong knight on d4. Black's position is really, really looking sketchy here. I'm going to have to settle for something passive like bishop e7, I think. Maybe I can play bishop d6. All right. We'll give it a try. Screen dog, 1668. I think he's played this pretty well. Totally normal position, except for the fact that my queen is on a5. It feels a little slow, like I'm a tempo down as well. Almost. <laughs> Almost okay for black. The basic premise is knight b5, bishop b8. And we're, we're hoping that we're okay there. Um, knight takes c6 is fine. We can get castled. There's no pin with bishop g5 because we have f6. So we're going to get out of dodge here. Dodge city. When things really look like a normal Tarash, Tarash French, a good one with white with the queen on a5, a good one for white, I should say. And I never can play queen c7. My queen will have to go back to d8. 
I don't know what to do. Um, I need a five just trading pieces. For lack of a better suggestion. I don't like trading pieces in a structure where I have an isolated pawn, but I literally don't know what else to do here. The knight on d4 is so good. String dog. Super solid. White is slightly better. You like white's bishops? I like his pawn structure. Next, I'm going to take the challenges from subscribers. Mule Skinner and Ayesta, and then Parametric would be next. A3s, okay, it's it's obviously not a bad move, but it doesn't really do anything. Now we can soften up his king side. Finally, our queen has a safe position um, where it makes some sense. We try to create some weaknesses in the white king side. I think A3 is... A little slow. Now our pawn is hanging, obviously. Is H6 a problem for me? Um, okay. I said that in a Freudian way. Um, should I play h6 to stop knight g5? Is what I meant. Well, I, I think I secretly didn't want to give him the right idea. Anyways, um, if h6... This is basically an equal position. I, I think that my pieces are active enough now that we have justification for the isolated pawn. But I definitely... You know, don't really want to weaken my structure if I can help it. Unfortunately, my d5 pawn is is potentially a problem. Rook a d8. Indirectly defending the d5 pawn. Got to watch my a7 pawn in some lines as well. I'm not a French defense player, but I did toy around with the idea of playing it at one point. No, I don't think a3 is bad, Mule Skinner. I just thought it was kind of... It was kind of slow for the moment, you know? It's not a bad move overall. It slightly weakens white structure, some squares. And again, so does a6. But Mule Skinner, you're the French defense player. <laughs> you know better than me, man. Honestly. Um, Anatoly Karpov played so many of these great games with white in this type of structure. But now, let's see. Knight e5. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Knight f5. That's starting to get a kind of scary feel to it. g6 leaves me with nowhere to go. And weakens my dark squares. So Rook on f to e8. Maybe I just take and play knight e5. String dog is really good 1600. Um... What else can I do? I mean, g6, I guess. Slightly weaken my structure. What can I do? I don't think he's going to checkmate me very easily here. There is a problem for me, though. Kind of a big problem. I didn't see it till now. Hmm. We might end up losing a pawn here. Not because of that. I think he had... He actually has bishop takes e4, d takes e4, bishop g5. 
and that's threatening my rook. So if rook e8, he has bishop h6 winning the exchange. I can't put the right rook on, on e8 there. Now, now I'm okay, but I'm not really that thrilled with my position. Um, it looks equal, more or less. But I guess in a vacuum, you, you have to say maybe white's slightly better. Though he has weakened his king side somewhat here. I mean, Mule Skinner, if you could take back a3 now, would you? You know, like, that's the kind of question I'm not sure about. What am I doing? String dog. 1600. Playing like Karpov. All right. I'm just barely okay. Now where is he going? We might get something going now. Maybe maybe I could have played bishop b8 there instead of knight c4. Weak squares, you know, whose weak squares are more significant here? Um, but I guess a3 is not a bad move in a vacuum. In general, he wants to exchange pieces, but I'm not sure, you know, he's. Doing it in the right moment. Okay, let's see. Queen d6. Takes check. I don't have any... I don't have any threats in time there. Knight takes a3. Rook takes a3. Queen d6. Rook moves. Check. He always just has a defense in these lines. I don't know. I don't see anything for me special. Nothing special. I don't see any tactics. I can't sack a piece for nothing. We got time for at least three or four more games. Well, at least three more games. This looks about equal. I don't think that the isolated pawn is that big a deal here. Probably a draw. Maybe I should have played queen e5 there, actually. Try to create some threats. But he was threatening knight takes c6. I would have to take back with the queen anyway. Sixteen sixty-eight. Pretty damn good 1668, man. Just your typical 1668. I don't know about this. We should be okay. 
the exchange is kind of weird. I'm not sure if I should keep the knights on there or what. Well, he's kind of playing for a draw, it looks like. Wait, actually, as... Um, I don't see how either side is going to make progress now. I can try. Well, that might be pretty dangerous. C3, B3. Can I win here? You should have played King D2 there. I think King D2 was a draw. This is the draw. Yeah, it's just a draw. Okay, not that easy to find it, but if you have enough experience, you'll see this move pretty quickly. King d2, there's just nothing. Anyway, it was a draw. I mean, I guess the king and pawn in game is just a draw. If we go back, apparently I was winning for one moment. I don't trust the computer here, but I didn't have much time, 12 seconds. Engine thinks I'm winning. Huh. That's odd. What's my winning plan? Well, it just says I'm better. It doesn't actually say I'm winning. I'm not sure that I trust Stockfish here too much. This may be a draw. All right. Mule Skinner is next. Ayeste. Yeah, it's a draw. White was better the whole game. I mean, a little bit. I'm going to play something unusual next move. Well, he played a3. This is a good line for white, but I like g6 the best. And I think that honestly, I've played this a few times myself with white on the Weird Wednesday streams. I think that you could transfer to a bishop c4 type of line here. Although Mule Skinner, you might have played this before. Um, I don't think white should do anything crazy like b4. That's not really good. I have seen it. But a3 fits well with bishop c4 type of lines. So it's it's just a kind of close Sicilian where you've played a3, bishop c4. Um, I don't normally play unusual openings so much, guys, but I'd like to do that for our stream today. Here, maybe e6, d4, d5. Maybe I'll omit knight c6 for a little bit. We don't need to play it right away. There are other variations we can play too. Other setups. Yeah, the queen a5 is known. I mean, it's like not really good, but it is a variation. I think it would be good just at the lower levels to confuse weaker players, but I wouldn't play queen a5 against a strong master. I would expect to get a, a bad position. It's good for blitz rapid and, and playing against weaker players who can easily get confused, but it's not a good move. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever play it in a tournament game for black. I've actually seen like e4, c5, knight f3, queen a5. Um, that's probably even like less justified for black.
All right. Well, eventually I'm going to have to put my knight somewhere. I'm not in a hurry to play d5 in these type of lines. Um, I have had some some bad bad experiences with that structure. So I, I like to kind of keep my options open. Black is basically facing a, a closed Sicilian type of setup that is often seen like in the English. Um, it's like a reversed English more often than it is a Sicilian line. Mule skin are very comfortable in, in, in like Grand Prix attacks, so this setup is actually not that different. The fundamental pawn structure and stuff. So it sort of suits him, I think. H6 is a useful move. You can play D5, but it's easy to overextend oneself. If I don't play D5, what do I do? That's the other question. If I don't play d5, h6 is like a prophylactic move, controlling g5, keeping him off of that square. Generally played again. I always use a famous game that Korchnoi played against this guy Stefan Sabo as an example from Bucharest, like 1953. Fortunately, it was white in a position with colors reversed, pretty much like, like this. Uh, where he, you know, being white gives you a big advantage. You have an extra move. But he was able to play, like, d5. Then the guy, like, put his bishop on f4, and Korshnoi kicked that with, like, g5. And, and then he used his pawns to push back all the white pieces. Mule Skinner lost a piece here. But he could be sacrificing a piece. I've occasionally seen this done as a sacrifice, an intentional sacrifice, but I don't think that's sound. This is just a lack of familiarity with the setup. Mule Skinner walking into the piece fork with d5, d4. This is the most common way to lose a piece with white, in my experience as a, as a blitz player. More people lose a piece like this than any other way in chess. Is queen c7 a good move? Well. You know, it can be. It can be a square to put the queen on. It, it can also sometimes be time-consuming and, and uh, a little slow. I'm a little bit slow. You know, my king is still in the center. Um, yeah, so... I would prefer to put my pieces probably, Mahmoud, like, on b6, bishop b7, queen d7, something like that. Defend the c5 pawn with the pawn, and then just put queen on d7, bishop on b7. Now Mule Skinner has to lose a piece for two pawns, basically. Knight takes d5. I don't even know if he can get the two pawns. It's a really bad mistake. The next, um, next challenge is from Ayesta, who we didn't see Mule Skinner and Ayesta yesterday. We had our Blitz tournament every every week on Tuesday. I do a, a Blitz or a classical tournament here on Lee Chess in the evening, 7 p.m. I have to send out a message today. We have a subscriber stream tomorrow. So if you guys want to analyze some game that you played, who are, you know, those of you who are subscribers to the stream, we're, we're going to be doing the subscriber stream as scheduled next no, next day, um, tomorrow, Thursday. So if you have an interesting game that you played, you want to analyze here on the stream, I will uh, feature it during the subscriber stream tomorrow night at 7 p.m. CET. Yeah, this this isn't enough for white. Mule Skinner, of course, normally playing the Grand Prix attack. Now my king is stuck in the center. But only temporarily. In fact, I can play b6 right away. Now b6 right away allows like bishop b5 first i'll play this and then my plan is like b6 he can keep it a little bit complicated maybe with something like a4 b6 bishop a3 probably i should trade his bishop with like bishop f8 i'm not even considering taking that pawn on b2 my priority is my king's safety i'm up material you know i don't like rook b1 
I mean, it's not a terrible move. He has two pawns for a piece here. But now he gets kicked away. Um, I would play a4 there. Maybe I really have bishop takes b2, actually. Maybe it's justified. I mean, it's true. If a4, bishop takes b2, I'm up a whole piece for, for one pawn. I guess he's right. There's just no time for anything. It's a lost position for white. He has just two pawns for a piece. Maybe bishop e3 here. Or bishop... Yeah, it's forced. Bishop... Bishop e3. He could play bishop b5. Instead. Chose to play it this way. But it's only two pawns for a piece. Actually, I have bishop g4. Bishop g4, c4. Slightly annoying move. Hard to avoid that anyway, but maybe I should take proactive measures. He's threatening queen d2 on my h6 pawn. Bishop g4, c4. I don't have bishop takes f3. Bishop g4, c4. Just something like queen to d7, I guess. And then when he plays h3, I have to take... Queen takes f3 castles. Yeah, okay, it's good enough. In general, if you're up a piece, you should try to look for ways to trade. I'm expecting c4, queen d7. I would play queen f... Actually, I have queen f5. Oh. Well, queen f5, queen, queen h5 would be the optimal, but then he has queen a4. Then I have bishop takes f3. Maybe this is good. I have that. All right. So we have this slightly more accurate move. Rather than retreating, um, I want to double his pawns. Accumulate more advantages. It's lost for white, of course. I just want to play it as accurately as I can, not to give him any chance. Um, at first I forgot that when he has queen a4 here, I'm just taking on f3 and protecting c6. So that's, that's the main point. I'm taking on f3 twice and, and the knight is protected. So we're just going to castle next move. And he can't stop me from castling kingside. So it's over. Um, no counterplay for white. I mean, maybe d4 is his best chance here. d4, bishop takes f3. This only chance. g takes f. Then castles. Threatening knight takes d4. There's no time for any tactics. I mean, I could castle queenside, but it's sort of unnecessarily risky. So I think we're we're going to err on the side of caution. He can just barely defend himself because of knight e5, king g2. Oh, he's dropping a c4 pawn though. Okay. So that's fatal. He loses the c4 pawn, it's game over. There goes his his extra pawns. That's it. And knight f3 check is just crushing. Crushing. There's no f4. Yeah. Alright. Well, Mule Skinner need to practice the a3 variation more. But you should know better than putting your bishop on e3. Um, Ayeste is a tough customer. We didn't see you guys yesterday, Mule Skinner and Ayeste. I guess you have things to do. Um, hopefully Ayesta is, is here. 
We have time for at least one more game after this. So whoever power metric would be next, and we'll see if there's time for one game or not or more. Um, I don't know. At least one more game after this one, depending on how long this takes. Okay, let's play something different uh, against Ayesta. I think I played D5 against him recently. What else can we do? Something like, let's try like a check defense or something like that. We had a check defense like game earlier. I don't really know the check defense, but it's sort of fun to mess around with. I did try to play the Pierce. Ironically, um, my first, I never really talked about this on the stream. These days are very long ago, but my first defense to E4 was the Pierce defense. I had this old book, Pierce defense for the tournament player. I think actually it was written by John Nunn, ironically. I didn't even know, like, Peart's... Actually, come to think of it, I'm not sure Nunn is even, like, an expert on the Peart's defense, but... Once I played a check defense against Alexander Ivanov, and I lost with white, but I thought I had a pretty good game. Um, other than that, I've never played it with black. You normally see F4, that's the sharpest... The sharpest move is F4 for white. This is a good line for something weird. Is queen a5 a move now? Probably. Queen a5 is, is a playable line. The only other move that makes sense is really... g6 transposing to a classical pierce where I played c6 too early, or... I mean, g6 is obviously a move, but it's more like standard, you know, and I'm trying to play something a bit unusual. So I'm sure bishop g4 is typically played. This could actually transpose to a so-called Wade variation or Wade defense. R.G. Wade, the former editor of Batsford Chess. Um... I was at his house years ago in London. He had the second largest chess library in, in the world, apparently. Just books everywhere. He's been dead for, for years now. But anyway, the Wade defense is like when you do um, a very early d6 and bishop g4. Typically, the knight doesn't have to go to f3 or f6 right away. Um, okay, so now, yeah... Now bishop h5 is risky because he can do g4, but I mean, I'm sure that's a, the main move here for black, probably. I can take on f3, but I mean, white has to have a slight advantage after that. We've transferred from the check to the wade defense. I mean, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. You can also play pawn takes f3, Bronstein style. This is a quiet move by white. You know, g4 is obviously like the most aggressive. I guess I'm supposed to play e6 now. I don't really see another move that I like. You could play um, e5, pawn takes e5, bishop takes f3. Some kind of unpleasant ending for black. Now I have to play e6, I think. Almost forced. No other setup makes any sense here. We're basically trying to play Karo Khan style. You might attribute it to the Slav. I remember I don't remember the game, but once I had a once I had a game with White in this opening against an IM Demo Werner, I think it was a draw. I was better though with White. Um Bishop g5 looks kind of weird. It's just an empty threat. 
We could even do something experimental like queen b6. That really... I mean, my pawn structure is kind of dubious there. I wonder if I have knight d7, e5, bishop takes f3. Why don't I have that? But he has g4. Uh-oh. <laughs> Careful now. Um, that's not good. I think knight d7 loses a piece. <laughs> knight d7 loses a piece to g4. Oh my god. Almost played it. The problem with this is that, you know, he can probably trade pieces. Trading the dark squared bishops is is a pretty solid setup for white. Maybe I'll take on f3 if he plays like e5. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, then with a weak pawn on e5, white might have trouble. Like an Al Alekian's defense. And I'm not sure e5 is really that safe for him. Again, knight d7 here. g4 is very weakening. He's playing a conservative setup with his king on g1. Now my bishop is on a weird square. So in this Karo Khan type of thing, I, I really, you know, I don't want to play e5 necessarily. And that kind of structure isn't right, you know. d5, e5. Knight e4, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, take, take. I end up with like a weak pawn there. But I'm a little concerned that after e5, I don't have a good place to go. How about bishop g6? Maybe this is okay. I'm very confident. I, th I know I sound very confident. Maybe this is okay. But white setup is pretty quiet. I didn't like, I didn't like d5, e5, knight g8, bishop takes, no, not bishop takes, he doesn't trade then, he goes back. That's what I was concerned about. e5, d5, e5, knight g8, bishop e3, and then my pieces are all messed up. But maybe I could play like bishop b4 there. I could do that actually. d5, e5, knight g8. Probably that's not bad. Bishop e3, bishop b4. Bishop going back to to a5, bishop c7, and putting my knight on e7. Like like a th two knights Karo Khan transposition. Um, that's probably okay for black. But I don't know. I just voluntarily retreated my bishop back to g6. If uh, knight h4, bishop takes e4, wins a pawn. So I guess to play super, super safe here. I'm also playing it safe. Now we play d5. I think it's equal. It's a very solid position. Now he gave up his central pawn, which I think is... Very interesting, and not clear which way I should take back on d5. But I think with his rook on e1, I mean, doesn't it make more sense to deny him an open file? My knight not, you know, not on the optimal square. It would rather be on c6, probably, in this type of structure. But it's all right. No need to find the most accurate move. No, no. Especially when you're playing one minute chess. The bane of chess. Um, all right. Knight e2 getting off the, getting off this backward C line. Okay. So what are we doing around here now? Transitioning to a different sort of situation. Hmm. 
Knight f4. Maybe I can get a more aggressive type of thing going on where he doesn't... I'm hitting c2. I don't want him to trade my dark squared bishop. That's the thing I've been avoiding with knight e4. It's totally like a queen's gambit here. Exchange variation. I stopped knight f4. I'm not sure black's really better, but I'm pretty sure I'm not worse. We've got a kind of initiative. Eventually I am going to castle. Bishop h5 is actually interesting here. Probably doesn't do a whole lot. Would have stopped that though, for whatever it's worth. Um, <clears throat> well, he's got this time edge. Taking with the F file, uh, no, the F file. Taking with the F file has been called. Bishop H2 check, nothing. It's like an exchange, Carol. Queen's Gambit. Guys, we have time for one more game after this, at least. I'll play with Power Metric, probably. Maybe only time for one more game, though. Yeah, Nakamura is so weak and he's so slow. Isn't the guy just horrible? Um, F5. Craziness, but let's do it. There's always a backwardness to this pawn on e6, but I want to create some menacing threats. But I guess that's pretty strong. I don't know. I didn't have a better idea. I mean, knight f6 is really passive for me. We might have caveman like f5, f4, f3 attack, you know, like a stone wall. And he has to be very, very careful about f3, having played h3. So I guess we go caveman. Now this is, okay, he's playing it safe this way. I'm actually going to take back this way. Battle lines are drawn. F4. F4, F3. Man, his knight is in a tough spot there. He's actually losing by force. All right. Well, guys, we have time for at least one more game. Parametric 5 plus 3. Um, let's play something different here. Dunst opening. The thing about the Dunst opening, though, I mean, there's so many transpositions. It doesn't have that much independent significance. All right. You know, normally white plays e4, but I'm going to play something a little bit like uh, Mexican defense. If c5, we have a reversed two knights tango. Guess we play e3 now. Looks like something Rapport Richie would like. The reversed Bolagon, King's Indian. We can play it like a King's Indian, but in order for it to be a King's Indian, he has to play c5. And I need the Finichetto. Well, there we go. So now we have two options um, Bishop e5 check. Well, that's the best option. It's a reverse Bogo Indian. 
Parametric is 1900. No, he's not. He's transposing to actually a, a Nimzo. Weird kind of Nimzo here. It's like a reversed reverse Nimzo. Maybe I don't want to commit too early to playing castles. I'm just going to play d3. If you castle early, I mean, I think the pin with bishop g4 becomes stronger. Um, the other challenges I have are pretty long games, so Sai Baba is a new account. I really ask everybody, actually this guy might be new too. I ask everybody to have like 100 games played. All right, no, actually he's got around 100, but I don't think I'm gonna have time. I mean, we might have time to play one more game. Um, Turbo horse and these guys are both okay. That's a totally new account, so I can't play him. If this game is fast, I'll play with Ivan, who has approximately a hundred games played. Um, looks like 67, 70, 85. We'll give him credit for a hundred. I don't like to play with totally anonymous new accounts. Yeah. So tomorrow night is the subscriber stream, 7 p.m., guys. You can bring games if you're a subscriber for analysis. I also play Blitz and Classical Chess challenges normally against uh, the subscribers. Maybe the Chinese the Chinese delegation was leaving the, the city. That's why there was this helicopter this morning. Now all the sounds are gone. Um, all right. We had a helicopter circling low to the the apartment this morning bishop g4 well i think h3 is pretty good and then you can think about playing g4 i mean i'm a pawn i'm a pawn up i'm a tempo up on a on a normal nimzo here um i'm having a flashback to to a game I had a long time ago, suddenly. Palos Osman, Bosnian master, who I played in Austria in 1996. And I think I was white in this type of structure with colors reversed. Um, I played like parametric, but with a tempo more. But I remember losing pretty badly against Palos. Later he would immigrate to the United States. So bishop h5, well, I mean, I kind of feel, feel like I need to pull the trigger on this. g4, knight e5. It's basically a normal type of line, except my knight is on c3. It's a nimzo with colors reversed. My knight on c3 a little early but that's my extra tempo. Um, the extra tempo should have some some value here. I actually have knight takes g6, h takes g6, g5. What is going on with that? Then d4. <laughs> um, Yeah, that's pretty complicated. I don't know how good that is. He even has moves like a6. Takes, takes g5, d4. Complicated at best. I think I like this controlled, controlled response a little bit better. A normal Nimzo. Where I think the extra tempo, again, is my knight c3. I mean, he could potentially get a bishop trapped, but it's not so easy to, to play f5. Um, normally, I'd have this position with like my knight on b1. And uh, how would it work? I would probably play bishop takes c6, b takes c, f4. And uh, 
Make that exchange and have no knight on c3 on, on the black side in the Nimzo Indian. Am I actually listed? Are the streams being listed on Lee Chess? I got 61 viewers, so I'm hoping that's the case. Last night there was some problem and the streams weren't listed, but I didn't check it. Does anybody, can anybody notice if that's the case here? H5, that's a really radical move. Um, it just looks like it tactically fails, doesn't it? I mean, he could play D4 like in the last line. I don't want to let him open up to king's side. I mean, sometimes you can do stuff like rook g1. Okay, who knows what's going on here? I mean, it almost looks like black has to play, like he must play d4 in this position, which is super weird. I could even play queen f3. I think black is just gonna collapse. I mean, the extra tempo is pretty valuable. But he can try d4. It's it's pretty much forced here, I think. This just loses a piece. I've got two challenges. Very bad wizard and checks. So we lost our other challenge. Um, yeah, black is just lost here. He's down a piece. So enough is enough. This, this pawn is bad too. Yeah, this just sh shows you like, it's not easy to play, you know, like you were white um, when you're when you're a tempo down, the extra tempo really makes a big difference. So, no way black can survive this. My king is safe and I'm a piece up. And he's actually got quite a bad bishop. Although that's a good try, you know. I think it's a good try. Castling opposite sides here. It's an excellent idea. You definitely, definitely are on the right track with that. Hmm. Try to make the position more complicated, if possible. I was actually seriously thinking about f5 there. Probably like the lowest maintenance move. Maybe I should do it now. This way he's like remaining like with his pawns fixed. It's one tactical problem. It's not a big problem though. I mean, queen g4. I was worried about queen d7, but it's probably not a big deal. I could just play queen g4 there. Now everything's protected. Or easy to protect. Queen g4. He's can, he can win a pawn back. Okay, queen g2. Alright guys, one more blitz game and we're out of here. There's no way I can play the second game, 7 plus 3. I'll try to play the other 5 plus 3. Then I've got to go. But, um... Parametric is not... Not messing around here. He's trying to take me out down a piece. He's now on another pawn. Just keeps coming up with threats. But eventually, he should run out. I'm getting a headache from this game. I guess I have knight f6 at one point, but trading pieces is good. All right, 
so last game, Sheck 65 if he has some rated games. All right, let's play this and then we're out of here for today. I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank Soltigo for moderating and helping with the the stream. Um, if Shex is here, we'll play this game. Unusual opening stream today, so I want to try something outside my usual repertoire. He'll probably play the London system. He's getting close. All right. Well, let's try something weird. A six. Yep, there it is. The only thing anybody plays is the London system. It's really sick. Like uh, in my team championship the other day, both the top boards were London system games. I mean, it's it's really gross. This B5 is not that good for me in this position. <laughs> but at least I can have, I can play B4 if A4 there. That's important. Got to have that ready to go, the B4. Not sure if I should play C5 right away. But it does make sense, I guess. It's a little risky, this extended Fianchetto on the queen side. But I think now... We got our knight to a good square. We can play it like a kind of normal setup. Maybe queen b6. Basically like a St. George defense. Putting pressure on d4 while guarding b5. Yeah, okay, now this is pretty standard. I don't I don't want to play, you know, and allow him to maintain a strong point on e5. So one of the main advantages of not playing d5 in the London system or whatever is, you know, when you play without d5, we're not going to give him this outpost square to keep. I think this is pretty good for us. Black is probably about equal here already, you know, and it's only move 10. That's not bad. You know, I'll take equality with black in 10 moves. Um, not a bad result. This move I, I see a lot, but I don't really know if I like it. It lessens white's control over e4. Looks like he's trying to play e4 by controlling d4 more, ironically. Can stop everything. Last game for today, guys. I mean, I understand the London system as, as like a, a solid opening for players who don't want to lose, but I don't understand like it being trendy and like it's a something for grandmasters to play. You know, I see a lot of GMs playing it. I couldn't imagine, I mean, on a very random basis, you might want to play it for a specific game, but for a strong player to play the London system on a regular basis, I just don't really get it. Kamsky plays it because he's lazy and he doesn't want to learn like normal openings. Um, Magnus plays it because he's so strong. Technically, he doesn't need an advantage in the opening. And he wants to avoid theory, you know. But for the average player who's strong and knows a lot of opening theory, I think they're selling themselves short if they play the London system. For amateurs who don't have time to build like a serious opening repertoire, I think it's a good practical choice. But I don't understand why it's being played in two games in my team championship on the first two boards. Yeah, it's the trend. Kramnik don't play the London system. Gary and Anatoly Karpov never played the London system. Anand doesn't play the London system. Um, 
looks like White's thinking about playing for C4 here. I'm mostly concerned about my development. <clears throat> I don't really see any threats for White. There's one thing that can happen that's kind of irritating. Take away from the center. Maybe I should play C takes D there. I should probably play C takes D. Given the opportunity after after C4, um, most likely. He's like not castling. Like what's he gonna do? Castle queenside here in this vacuum? Um, this, this creates a symmetrical pawn structure, which is going to be hard for me, but h4 is, h4 is pretty crazy. I mean, actually, why don't I take on c4? Take toward the center. Okay, he could steal the b file, but he didn't. He took with the bishop. Now, um, pawn takes pawn. Knight takes pawn, bishop takes g2. I mean, okay, he's going to play like some kind of... He's going to lose a piece there, actually. If he takes with the knight, bishop takes g2, followed by e5, wins a piece. Though he may have some sort of tactical tricks. His king is in the center, and mine is totally safe. I could simply play like bishop d7, winning material. Um... These pieces are vulnerable to attack by the black pawns. And the position's opening up here. Okay, this is the safer move on paper for white, definitely. E5. And E5 is really tempting, but he has pressure on so pressure on my F7. E5 doesn't quite work here. I don't want to trade my white squared bishop. It's just too valuable of a piece, I think. You could. I could I could do it and play like d5, probably, and then check on d4. Um, but it is such a strong piece. I don't see any reason to do that. Let's just let's just play positionally. You know, we don't have to rush. We just improve our position little by little. Um, this lever with a4. What would Magnus do with black here? He would have a field day um, in this position with black against pretty much anybody. White just has too many weaknesses. If you take if you take a player like Carlson and put them in a position like this with black, he'll play very patiently. Nothing fancy, you know, no fancy tactics, just slowly improving the position. White's just recklessly opening up with his king in the middle of the board. I almost have e5. This this virtually wins, but there's the threat of, of my f7. I don't think that white knows about the castling rule. Um, seems to be the deal. Now e5, it's almost a threat. We're a little over time, guys. I usually finish 12.30. He doesn't want a castle. All right. He's a wild man. Just trying to improve my pawn structure. You end up with an isolated pawn. Two isolated... Isolani, sorry, Isolanis, and um, also this pawn is weak up here. Just so much harder to play white. He's constantly got to guard all these weak pawns, and he doesn't really have any concrete threats. Queen d3. What's that about? All right. I'm not sure I want to trade queens. Sh 
should be able to win a pawn somehow, at least. The A pawn is close to toast. These three pawns, the h5, the d4, and the a2, they're all highly suspicious here. We've got the compact pawn island. The pawns protect pawns. Looks like I can probably pick off h5. But maybe more importantly, we can build up pressure on a2. But he's actually defending pretty credibly here. King g2, I mean, okay, I'm threatening knight takes f4 now, so. This move actually, wow, just doesn't care. Okay. Um, I don't even want to take his bishop. So funny. The bishop is just a big pawn. I don't even want it. Like to trade queens, but actually, let's guard the back rank. Well, I have knight g4, I should attack here. Okay, never mind. All right, I'm being too passive minded, right? So that's it. All right, guys, that's it for today. Too many pawn weaknesses for white. We will, um, I almost thought about retreating. I didn't see knight g4 at first. We'll be back tomorrow night with the subscriber stream. I want to thank you guys for subscribing and watching and playing and um, remind you that I have a YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I, um, I really thank you guys for supporting the stream via PayPal. You can make a donation via the YouTube channel. Again, Video Chess Training on YouTube or here on, on Twitch. Thanks to Soltigo for being our moderator and for helping with the stream. Um, thanks to all you guys who subscribe every month. I really appreciate it. So tomorrow night, Thursday, is our subscriber stream. Um, bring a game like a tournament game or an interesting game you played online to analyze and share here on the stream. Otherwise, we'll play some Blitz and Classical Chess tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. European time. Awesome, guys. I will see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.